Good morning, dear children. Today, let us learn new chapter. That is chapter number seven from history. New questions and ideas. Upanishads, Jainism, and Buddhism. So let us learn in detail what is Upanishads, Jainism, and Buddhism. So let's start. So from 600 BC to 400 BC, there are a lot of common in Indian subcontinent in the political, social, religious, and cultural life of India. From the study of Upanishads, Jainism, and Buddhism, we can get a glimpse of these new ideas and moments. So first is Upanishad. With the passage of time, early Vedic religion became not only complex but also very cost, costly because of the introduction of many religious priests, lenti, yajnas, and animal sacrifices. Okay, as a reaction, the idea, new ideas of good actions, pure and simple life developed slowly but steadily. We find an echo of these ideas in the Upanishad and new faith of Jainism and Buddhism. So I'm going to explain you in short. Rest you read it by yourself. The Upanishads are actually a part of the Vedic literature. Okay. Uh, Vedic literature and lays emphasis on simple life and true action. It also gives emphasis on the theory of karma, maya and mukti. Okay. So Vedic literature as we know, a Vedic religion. At first the Vedic religion was very simple, easy to understand and easy to practice. But with the passage of time it became complex and costly because of the introduction of many religion priests as just now I read. So simply the Upanishads are actually a part of the Vedic literature. Okay. It also gives emphasis on the theory of karma, maya and mukti. So... Um, Upanishads will always maintain a place in the literature of the world among the most outstanding production of the human mind in any country and in any age. Now let's proceed to the next <coughs> causes of rise of Jainism and Buddhism. Okay, so um, <coughs> uh, early re religion of the Aryans was very simple both to understand and to practice, but gradually it became quite complex. Religious practices had become not only complex but also very costly. Okay, the introduction of animal sacrifice in the yajnas further alienated the people. They crave for a simple religion, uh, devoid people. They crave uh, for high expenses and animal sacrifices. Sanskrit, the language of Vedic text, was now no longer within the comprehension of the common people. The simple varna system had. Uh, degenerated into a religious caste system the high caste hinduism developed hatred for the low caste people most of whom were brand, uh, branded as sudras or untouchables who were subjected to abject humiliation suffering and misery so dear children remember in previous chapter we read the rise of Janapadas and Mahajanapadas. So in that chapter we already read that how the Hinduism has classified into how many parts? F uh, four parts, Brahmanas and Sudras, Khastriyas and all. So like here it's tell that developed headdress for low caste people, most of whom were branded as Sudras was the lowest caste, considered as lowest caste and untouchables. So likewise these things has already started. So during the 6th century BC, religious practice had become more complex and very costly. That was compulsory for them. So simple Varna system had uh, degenerated into a rigid caste system while Buddhism renounced Buddhism, Jainism and rigidity of the caste system and condemned the practices of untouchability and taught the part of love and kindness so this was the causes of rise of Buddha, jainism and buddhism main causes of rise of jainism and buddhism just to spread love and kindness among them not to believe the caste system the pujas the yajnas and all so let us continue with the jainism so jainism so life of mahavira details is given in your book read it by yourself i'm going to explain in short so, Mahabira was born in 6th century BC at uh, Kundragram near Basali in modern Bihar. Now, the teaching of Jainism are Ahimsa, okay, Ahimsa or non-violence and uh, several finance and self-sacrifice, no faith in yajnas, 
sacrifice and ritual ritualism okay worship of 24 tirthankaras which jainism believe and practice no faith in god no faith in the caste system so teaching of mahavira the follow the three ratnas three jewels have is a right faith right conduct and has to give the followers right knowledge okay and here the main teaching of jainism are ahimsa sabrathness and self-sacrifice okay no faith in yajna sacrifice and ritualism worship of 24 tintankaras no faith in god no faith in any caste system and the last topic under mahavira jainism is next life and the karma theory the jains too like the hindus and buddhists believe in next life and transmigration transmigration of soul about two centuries after mahavira's death the jain were divided into two sects the digambaras or the orthodox followers of mahavira who preferred to lead a life of self-torture and remain naked as you can see here in a picture digambar monk digambar monk uh, they preferred to lead a life of self-torture and remained naked and the Swetambaras or the followers of uh, Badrabahu who wrote War White Trees. So at one time Jainism became one of the most popular religions. Some kings also followed the teachings of Bahavira. They also built some beautiful temples on one of which is the famous Dilwara temple at Mount Abu and another at uh, Palitana Satrunja hill in Gujarat. So this is all about the jainism next we have buddhism like mahavira lord buddha also led a revolt against the evil practice that had become part of the hindu religion okay but unlike mahavira he followed the middle part so let's start with the life of the buddha lord buddha also came from a royal family his father sudho sudhodana was the king of kapilavastu buddha was born in 6th century bc at the place called the uh, lumbini garden when his mother mahamaya was returning from her mother's house she died when the prince was hardly seven days old it is said that siddhartha okay lord buddha that was the real name of buddha okay siddhartha took no interest in worthy ap worldly affairs and spent long hours in meditation therefore his royal father who wanted to divert his attention to the marital joys of the world arranged his marriage with a beautiful princess Yashodhara Siddhartha was then only was then only 19 years old a son was also born to them they named him Rahul dear children look at figure 7.3 Buddha leaving his wife and son why let's see the great renunciation all comforts of palaces life and the joys of materials bliss could not affect the prince much one day driving with his characters Channa he came across a sick man and an old man his with his back bent and still another day he saw the agony of that all this sight made him sad and he clamored to find the meaning <coughs> sorry means of salvation he felt like a bird in a cage so one night he uh, one night when his wife was asleep he slipped away from his royal bedroom and renounced the world he was then only 29 years old this event is called as a great renunciation so he lived his family to get salvation and after that uh, doing of so many meditation what happened the he left the that, that part okay uh, one night when he was sitting under a people tree through light drawn on him and he become the buddha or the enlightened one this happened at bodh gaya in bihar when he was 35 years of age on the side where buddha got the enlightenment now stands of mahabodhi temple the center of attraction for the world so as you can see here in a picture 7.4 buddha uh, perturbed the see the sick and the dead and buddha's earliest disciples were Mag uh, maghalana and the uh, sariputta and uh, four noble truth is the world is full of misery and sorrow the main cause of his misery and sorrow is desire 
Mastery and sorrow can be ended by killing the desire. This desire can be killed by following the eightfold part. The teaching of Buddha are before proceed to the the teaching of Buddha are ahimsa, nirvana, faith in the theory of karma, no faith in yajnas, sac uh, sacrifices and ritual ritualism, just as Mahabira's uh, principle, no faith in the caste system. So silence over the existence of God, the teaching of Buddha are called the middle part. Because he hated both the extremes, the dogmatic and the worldly life of the Brahmanas and the grim austerity of Jains. Now teaching of Lord Buddha, a fourth noble truth and eighth pole part is, according to Buddha, there are four noble truths. First one, this world is full of maestri and sorrow, and just now we read, the main cause of all this maestri and sorrow is desire. Maestri and sorrow can be ended up, ended by uh, killing the desire, and desire can be suppressed or killed by following the eightfold part. The eightfold part, which every Buddhist is expected to follow, consists of the following eight principles which were based on high morals and rich, uh, righteous conduct, right belief, right thought, right speech, right action, right living, right effort, right recollection, right meditation. This part is sometimes called the middle part because Buddha had both the extreme and the dogmatic and worldly life of the Brahmanas and the grim austerity of Jains. He avoided the extreme and followed the middle part. So Ahimsa, Nirvana, Faith in theory of karma, all the details is given in your book, read it by yourself. The faith in yajna, sacrifice and a ritualism. No faith in caste system. Silence over the existence of God. And here you can see in figure 7.6, some information is given here. The Mahabodhi temple standing at Bodh Gaya in Bihar, which contains the Bodhi tree in the courtyard, is one of the most sacred place of the Buddhism. This temple is said to have been built on the side where Buddha meditated and got enlightenment. Okay. Now in 7.7, .7, the Sanchi Stupa in Madhya Pradesh represent the best specimen of Buddhist uh, architecture. Or originally, it was built by Ashoka in 3rd century BC. The next chapter, we will learn about Ashoka. But was later on enlarged in the Sangha period, that is 185 BC to 773 BC. The stupa consists of big hemispherical dome containing the Buddhist relict at umbrella surrounding dome and four gateway. Each gateway is equipped with two square upright posts sermon by captain. So read it. Now we have monastery. So the permanent shelter of monk and both Jain and Buddhism were known as monasteries or viharas. The land of these monasteries were donated by rich people or the king during that time. The local people offered food, clothing, etc. to the monks and the nuns. Okay, In return, they taught the people. Some of these monasteries developed into great seats of learning. They imparted training in the Hindu philosophy, the Buddhist religion and logic. Even the lay people <coughs> could come to receive education. <clears throat> there and also get the help of learned scholars in solving their problems. These monasteries also did social service and undertook many activities for the welfare of the general public. And next we have education is ashrams. Great importance was attracted to education. Bra Brahman gurus imparted education in the ashrams. The Gurukul system was quite popular in ancient India. Some ashrams were just like modern universities where higher education was also given. They were generally situated far away from the populated areas. These ashrams worked under the guidance of Rishi who was famous for his learning and knowledge. And ashrama had various subjects like logic, religion, politics, economics, music and archery etc. These ashrams were non-Buddhist. Okay, Ashramas were non-Buddhist. So next we have spread of Buddhism and its causes. So uh, Buddhism became a popular religion with uh, the people of Sri Lanka, Tibet, China, Japan, Burma, Thailand, 
Indochina and other countries in East and South East Asia. Some of the causes that lead to the popularity of Buddhism in India and other countries were as given below. It was simple religion and it laid no stress on useless ritual and costly sacrifice. Okay. Number two, the Buddha and his monks preached in the simple language of the people which everybody could easily understand. Number three, Buddhism did not believe in practice of dividing the people into high and low caste. It preached equality of all men. Number four, the ancient Indian universities of Taxila, Nalanda and Vikramshila became great seat of Buddhist learning. Uh, scholars from India and abroad came there not only to learn but also to supplement the knowledge of others. Above all, the royal patronage that Buddhist Buddhism was about to acquire in India and abroad made it popular in India. Kings like Ashoka, Kanishka and Harshavardhana did a great job in carrying the message of Buddha to other place, places. Next, decline of Buddhism in India. How it declined? Gradually, some evil practice crept into, really, into the religions of the Buddhas, Buddha as well. With the passage of time, the Buddhist monk accumulated wealth and began to lead a de uh, degenerated life degenerated life the uh, the spread in buddhism hinayanism and mahayanism also had an evil effect vedic release hinduism also tried to rid itself of its weakness and ultimately there was a strong revival of the uh, vedantic hinduism under the leadership leadership of adi uh, Sankacharya who established the supremacy of the old Vedic religion in India. It happened during the age of Imarshal Guptas that is between the 4th and the 6th centuries. Okay, So later on the rise of the Rajputs coupled with the Huna invasions also led to its fall. Second last topic we have Buddhism and Jainism a comparison point of similarity you need to know this point points of similarity okay both Buddhism and Jainism were reform movements they were started to reform the Hindu religion okay both were in favor of ahimsa or non-injury to animals okay animal sacrifices ritualism and all both condemned the caste system and were against the Vedas and Sanskrit okay both of them Challenge the superiority of the Brahmanas. Sorry, Brahmans. Points of differences. While the Buddha was silent about the existence of God, Mahavira denied his existence. Mahavira does not believe the particular and particular God, while the Buddha uh, believed in God. Okay, they believe they were silent about the existence of God. While Jainism laid much stress on hard penance. Buddhism followed the middle part. Buddhism does not believe in remaining naked as some of the followers of Jainism believed. Now, last but not the least, we have effects and contribution of Buddhism. Buddhism influenced almost every aspect of Indian life. It promoted the feeling of peace and many projects for the welfare of the people were undertaken. By opposing the rigidity of the caste system, it promoted the feelings of unity and brotherhood. In the cultural field, Buddhism contributed the most many beautiful temples to pass, biharas and chaityas were built for the first time. The life-size statues of any deity, that is the Buddha, were made and worshipped in India. The Buddhist Monasteries became great center of learning. Buddhists encouraged the common languages of the people like Pali and pra Prakit. Okay, in one field, however, Buddhism proved harmful. It killed the martial spirit of the people and thus brought slavery to India. So, this story is ended up here. So, um, learn the question answer. And prepare well for the exam. Thank you.